Hello everybody, welcome to Kalen's Game Corner. Today we're going to be playing Cassette Beasts. It's an indie RPG that plays quite a bit like Pokemon. It's really fun, actually. I'm really excited to show you guys. I've uh, played a fair bit on my own, as you can see. I uh, really like this game. So this is going to be like a first look video to show you guys kind of what the game plays like to gauge to see if you guys would maybe like to see me play more. So with that, we're going to get right into it. And it's going to start right with character creation. And I am basically just going to make the same thing I made before because I am very unoriginal. Do, 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 do. Uh, don't have a hair accessory, but if I did, I'd want it to be blue. Just checking around, and we're just gonna go with beard one. It's like my awesome beard. And once again, I don't have it, but if I did, I'd want it to be blue. And they let us change clothes later, but you just kind of start with this basic outfit. So this is a semi-open world game, so you can do a lot of stuff in pretty much whatever order you want. So you start washed up on this beach. And, well, you can, first you got to get through the tutorial, obviously. But once we're through the tutorial, uh, we can kind of do things in whatever order we want. So for this first look video, we're just going to play through the tutorial. Oh no, it's a living traffic cone. It's the most powerful monster in the entire multiverse. So one thing that's interesting compared to Pokemon is instead of just like sending out your monsters, you, uh, you actually transform into the monster in battle. Uh, and this is static, this is for picking your starter. Uh, you can either pick Sweet to get the little candy guy, or Spooky to get the ghost sheep. I, I picked Spooky when I played by myself, so just to make myself use a different one, I'm gonna pick yeah. this one. And that gets me Can Devil. that'd be my starter. I'm gonna give you a minute to read the little entry before I continue. So yeah! That's my guy. <laughs> right. So this is obviously super scripted. I'm pretty sure you're just guaranteed to one shot here. Yeah, because there's no way you should do 127 damage at level one. Oh, another really cool thing about this game is your character levels and your monster levels are separate. I'm Kaylee. And uh, part of what's cool about that is it means it's easier to switch your monster team out when you want to use new ones because your overall level that determines your stats is tied to your human character instead of your monsters. is a wimp. Wonderful. Oh, no, sorry, you're stuck on the island. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass out, actually. That sounds pretty good and normal. On Earth? Sorry. Oh, boy. I'm afraid not. No, oh no, I can't leave the island. Oh, I sure hope, I sure wish there was a convenient main story that would be relating to this issue. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, go, go get clothes and then go do the thing. It's... It's pretty standard stuff. So what's part of what's cool about this game, right? 
is uh, the type system. It's not as simple as doing more or less damage. There's actually like special reactions. So for example, if an air attack hits a fire monster, it lowers their attack stats. Or if it hits a lightning monster, it makes their attacks multi-target, so you gotta be careful who you hit with what attacks. But what do you mean I should put on proper clothes first? These are proper clothes, obviously. Come on, pajamas. I guess, if you're gonna make me. Yeah, so like I said, I'm just gonna make my character from my single player file again, I think. Just cause, you know, I want to. Cause there's no way I'll get confused on which file is which if I do this right. I mean, it, it, it's impossible. It, it's never, it would never happen. I have no idea what you're talking about. Nothing could go wrong. I'm really used to having all the traversal abilities and it feels really weird and wrong to not have them now. I move so slow. Hey. Well. Hmm. All right, so the battles in this game are usually 2v2, so there's not going to be as much just absolutely <laughs> erasing monsters just because you one-shot them. Hmm. Man, you know, I question the, uh, I question the strategy of just being like, hey, hey, new guy, you've been here for five minutes and have no idea what's going on. I know it'll help you adjust to what's going on right now. Go fight to the death with these random monsters. Right. Because that's totally something that's fair to expect, right? There's not a whole heck of a lot of uh, strategizing I can really do with, uh, with what I've got. You know, I've got one monster, and it's a beast type, which is this game's equivalent of a normal type, so it's basically just neutral to everything. Uh, I should also mention one other thing yeah. about a lot of the monsters in this game is a lot of them have multiple evolution paths they can take, depending on either choices hey. you make. Like, literally, they'll give you an option. Or sometimes you... Uh, it depends on special circumstances, whether it's night or day, what attacks they know. There's all sorts of stuff that can influence it. Uh, another really cool thing hey. is the attacks your monsters get are actually just stickers on the little cassette tapes they're in. So you can actually uh, switch them out as long as the other monster that you want to let the move on is able to learn it as well. So there's a lot of customization as well as getting there. Oh yeah, also the types are, there's some of them that aren't as generic as the others. I mean like, plastic is a type. I hate moves with a mischance so much, man. Like, you say it's 85% accurate, but that tells me it's always gonna miss when I want it to hit. There's really not much reason to linger around and like level grind too hard since I only have one monster right now and I don't think I can even... Do I have... Ta no, I don't have the tapes to get another one. So I'm probably just going to do this one fight, rest at the campsite, and then keep going. But yeah, I really like the reaction system with types instead of it just being extra damage or less damage. It's really interesting. Well, at least he hit with it that time. Oh yeah, also there's no money in this game. Instead, you, uh, you just gather resources and then trade the resources. And camping out in campsites costs woods. Or, yeah, cost woods. Good job, Galen. Costs wood. So you can't just rest out in the middle of nowhere infinitely. Though plenty of monsters drop wood as a 
as a drop, so it's not too big of a deal. And I think it's really neat since, you know, your monsters are on cassette tapes. Rewinding the tape with a pencil is this game's equivalent of a healing item. I just thought that was kind of neat. Hmm. Alright, if I remember correctly, this is the monster caching tutorial. Okay. Well. Okay. Rather than let the NPC explain it, pretty much how recording monsters to your tapes works is you have a percent chance, which is modified based on what happens during the turn you're trying to do it. Uh, so damaging the monster raises the chance, and collecting with negative effects raises the chance, but when they, uh, damage the person trying to record them, it lowers the chance of success, so it's guaranteed in this particular case for the tutorial. Uh, but what I really like about it is that when a monster is being recorded on tape that turn, it cannot be defeated no matter what. None of the stuff that would normally knock it out is able to drop its HP to zero. So you don't have to worry about, you know, using a move with recoil or getting killed by poison right. or anything like that. So you just kind of get to try it and be safe about it. The only thing is uh, when you're trying to record a monster, you detransform from your monster form. And when your character's in their human form, they're more susceptible to damage because, well, for one, they're weaker. And... You know, you don't have the monster's health bar to block you from damage, so it can get a little bit dangerous sometimes. And some of the monsters, when you catch Sorry. them, gives those field abilities. So instead of HMs, like in Pokemon, where you have to teach the specific moves to your guys, in this game, it's all based off of... It's all based off of, uh the monsters you find. So there's six specific monsters that once you record them, you get special abilities. Uh, though one of them is this game's equivalent of a legendary, so it's really hard to get. Oh, wait, that's not the way I'm supposed to go. So yeah, uh... Oh, I kind of forgot about huh? this part. Uh, oh, wait, no, I was about to say I don't have tapes in this guy's room, but then I'm like, wait a minute, yes I do, I do have tapes, I can totally get this guy. Dandelion here is actually really rare for this area, so it was lucky to get him to spawn. See, and there's your first example of a, uh, of an element interaction, like the tutorial here says. Air-type attacks can uproot plant-type targets, disconnecting from the source of their nutrients to the ground. And that gives them AP drains, so they get less action points per turn, so it takes them longer to charge up their good attacks. So I'm gonna record a few guys before finishing up with the tutorial because, well, obviously having a full party would be good. Didn't mean to one-shot that Carnaviper, actually. I kinda wanted to grab him. I got Dandelion. He's pretty cute. You know, I don't understand why Sirenade gets provoked, though, because Sirenade's defensive stats aren't actually all that good. Alright, and I have to remember to drop manual saves frequently. Because, uh... Huh? I have autosave off. The reason why is because I learned this the hard way 
uh, the first time, there's a monster that's part of a main quest that's really rare, and it's that one I was saying that has a traversal ability, but it's basically a legendary. And it took me like five hours to get another one to spawn because the game auto-saved over me not being able to catch it. So I'm not going to make this uh, that mistake this time, so I'm going to be using manual saves. And uh, so, yeah, these are the main oh, no. bosses. These are, Ar like, this is an Archangel. So, basically, Archangels in this game, they're, well, I mean, kind of a bit of a story spoiler, but they're basically creatures from different stories and legends. And kind of the whole theme of them is they don't fit within the reality the game is taking place in. So they just, you know, they have weird clashing art styles and all the glitch effects and stuff. I think it's pretty cool. You know, a little bit of a level difference going on, though, let's be honest. Ow! Well, gee there, I feel like that was a little bit too much damage for one hit. Oh, and here's the other really cool, unique battle mechanic. Uh, is that your monsters can fuse together into one temporarily mid-battle, and it makes them really strong, because it combines their stats together. Oh, I should also mention the vocals for the battle music only plays when you're fused together. You have no idea how hard it is to avoid the temptation to just not talk because I'm playing an RPG and I'm so used to sitting alone and playing those silently for hours. I'm using Sonic Boom because it doesn't have a miss chance. So, uh, funny story, when I was playing on my single-player file for this, uh... I, uh, I accidentally waltzed right into one of the really difficult <laughs> Archangel boss battles, uh, way before I was supposed to. So even though its level was scaled lower, its attacks were super nasty for that point in the game. Very well. Great song. Good job. <sighs> really great. There were zero lyrics to it. Hmm. Archangels. So yeah, um, I know I'm kind of speeding through the dialogue instead of just, you know, letting it play super slow, Sorry. but if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't have enough things to say to fill all of the, <laughs> uh, <sighs> all of the, the time that it would take for the dialogue to go. But basically, the gist of, uh, <laughs> of the plot of the game 
the gist of the plot is exploring the island to find all of the archangels in order to find a way to leave. It's kind of the goal. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh, another thing uh, that's a little bit annoying is for all of the other battle buddies other than Kaylee, you have to do their uh, their quest before you can actually use fusion with them, which is uh, it's really annoying actually because some of them require you to traverse like the whole map so it's not something you can really do right at the beginning so yeah that was that was the tutorial not a whole heck of a lot going on in case i i skipped through the dialogue a little too fast for you guys to read i mean the pause button exists on you on the youtube player but you know if that's not good enough for whatever reason uh basically the tldr of what happened in the tutorial is i washed up on the island i i got i got uh this little dude that i can transform into in battle uh this, this town, Harbor Town, is where all the people who washed up on this island live. Hey! And, oh, I accidentally walked into more content! Heck yeah! So unreasonable. B bonus content in the video, hooray. Uh. <sighs> yeah! And here's Eugene. Thank you. Hey, the name's Eugene. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, now that that's sorted, so yeah. Harbor Town is a town on this island. All the people who wash up here uh, live here because, well, it's like the one safe place. And just went on a little patrol and discovered that train station with that archangel in it. So that's about the gist of what happened, if you needed a recap. Uh, anyways, I think that's probably going to do it for my first look video. If you guys are interested in seeing more, uh, let me know. I, if anybody's interested, I'll record more. I was thinking maybe even of live streaming it because I was hoping to get into live streaming this month. So everybody have a good day. This is Kalen signing off.